We have already talked about a no-hitter, but we could have some other good matchups coming up. Welcome back to Fantasy Baseball today, brought to you by Captain Morgan. We're glad to see you. I'm Lauren Shahadi. Eric Mack, Arrestus Destrade. Uh, give me some fringe guys that our fantasy owners can take advantage of. They're excited well, about these good it's matchups. It's the Rockies again. They're facing the Nationals in Florida. I think uh, with the Rockies, you got Aaron Cook as a two-star pitcher. I think he could start in mixed leagues. I pick, picked him up in the top wars. Jorge De La Rosa, I know he struggled his last time out. Two-star pitcher, I would start him. You got Randy Wells with the Cubs. Um, then you go back at the Cubs rotation. You got Tom Gorzolani pitching for his rotation spot as Ted Lilly's trying to come back. Uh, the Twins, uh, Carl How Pavano. About that? Yeah. Carl Pavano and Nick Blackburn coming off bad starts, but when you got uh, Cleveland, Kansas City on the schedule, I think you can run those two guys out there. We'll talk plenty about the Phillies later in the show. And then you got Houston Astros. I know they're struggling, but when you're facing the, the, the Marlins and Pirates, I think a back end starter on their team could be useful like a Bud Norris. You know, I, I know fantasy baseball is all about matchups, but if you're telling me to sit Levon Hernandez, I'm, th I'm saying no, I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, well, he's facing... But the matchups are tough, right? He's facing that guy that just pitched a no-hitter. No-hitter. So it's going to be tough for <laughs> LeVon Hernandez to keep this up. I'm not a guy that buys in LeVon Hernandez anyway. The, the Nationals altogether, their rotation's tough to trust. Even in our only leagues, they have... The Rockies and the Dodgers, the the Tigers, you know, some of their back end starters, Willis and Bonderman, you gotta sit these guys at LA and at Texas, and the Arizona Diamondbacks, the Cardinals and Phillies, those two those two teams can rake. And so your back end starters on the D backs, they're a little sketchy anyway, so you gotta keep them I can't down. believe you you don't I you don't I love Miami. How could you not love Miami? <laughs> That's Leon Hernandez, bro. Oh, yeah. I, I gotta ask you, as a hitter, do you focus more against the tougher pitchers or do you say, you know what, I'll get the scrub tomorrow? That's a great point. It really is. Because the season is such, you know, a marathon, and, and it has these peaks and valleys, and you try not to get too high or too low. But there are certain starters and certain series that you look forward to, and you go like, oh, my gosh, here comes Doc Holliday. You know what I mean? Here comes Johan Santana. So what you try to do, yeah, you get pumped up for that when you look at more video. You you maybe you sleep a little more or less, depending on <laughs> what works for you. But the reality is that you can't let that game dictate the series. For example, if that's the ace on a, on a particular, you know, first game of the series, you want to kind of look beyond that. That and go, okay, well, I got, you know, their number three or four guy down the road or number two that I've handled well. But you do, I believe that, that any good player or any player, you know, you know, in a rightful mind, you know, gets pumped up for the challenge of facing somebody that good. So a good hitter kind of breaks even against good pitching, but then they make their money against the bad. Oh, Your totally. night's sleep just the depends on line. it. Good night's sleep yeah. or bad night's yeah, sleep. Yeah, it depends. I had some, you know, two hour night sleeps and I had great games. So sometimes I did that as a, you know, just superstition. <laughs> sure. You know, I stay up. I go, I got four hits the other day and I didn't sleep. That's right. It is about that time. Time for buy, sell. Are you excited? Well, it depends on who I'm buying and selling. All right. Well, we're talking about about O's guy right away, LeVon Hernandez. I am selling LeVon Hernandez. I don't like oh. him. I, I know he gets off to good Look starts. He got off to a good We're start with the Mets. Um, look at that strikeout to walk ratio. He's a guy that's hittable. He pitches the contact, and if you talk to the Bay Bib guy, Al Melchior on CBSSports.com, <laughs> he'll tell you Luvan Hernandez is lucky. So I'm not buying Luvan Hernandez. He's also facing. Been lucky for a long time. He's facing. Uh, well, um, he pitches deep in the games. No, so he that, that, no, that's I agree good. with you 100. Um, that's where some of contact. this fantasy valley comes to. Um, but then he gets beat up at times. He's yeah. gonna give up eight runs in an inning on totally. in a drop of a hat. And he's facing that guy that just pitched a no hitter. Right. And the Rockies can hit the ball. Up next, Mike Pelfrey. What do you think? I'm buying Mike Pelfrey. Good call. I think last year he was supposed to be the breakout, but the Mets completely broke down. Pelfrey's off to a good start. He can run it up to 95, 96 miles an hour. He's a guy that can be a breakthrough this season. This is his fourth season. Um, I think Mike Pelfrey is a guy I buy. In fact, in uh, fantasy week three, he has two tough matchups, but I'm starting him because of the way he's pitched. I, I think also at home in that pitcher's park, he's going to start half his games in one of the best pitchers parks in baseball. Mike Pelfrey is a guy to own in mixed leagues right now. Are you as confident with Dana Eveland? No, this guy's uh, a journeyman, on a back-end starter on a bad Blue Jays club that will finish fourth or fifth in the American League East. I know he's off to a good start. Uh, to me, this guy is a, a scrappy pitcher that, yeah, you got to ride out of him in an uh, AL-only league perhaps, but I wouldn't start this guy in a mixed league. You never know when he'll just implode. What about Justin Verlander? Maybe not performing up to expectations, but... Well, Verlander's a guy you got you got to keep riding. He's going to come around. It might be that, that this is his year. You know, he's a guy that goes good year, bad year, good year, bad year. Uh, this could be a down year, but you've already you've already paid the premium to get him. Mm -hmm. you got to ride him out, wait for him to come around. It's too early to jump off ship on an early round pick like Justin Verlander. Jonathan Lester starting slow, but he's done this before. Yeah, he started slow last year, um, and he came back and had a huge year last year. So Lester's an obvious guy that, you know, maybe maybe you don't start him in fantasy week three. Let him prove a little more effective. Get, get the kinks out. 
out, but you can't, you can't sell low on John Lester. If you're doing that, you're costing yourself. Um, you've already absorbed the worst of John Lester. Leave him on your team and in your lineup for what could be the best of him. Uh, don't sell low on him. And they're so, you know, the latter two guys you're talking about, Lester and Justin, they're so dramatic. They're like, you know, fourth hitters in, in a baseball team or in a fantasy team. Streaky. They might be streaky, but when they get hot, you're talking about a lot of wins in a row and a lot of strikeouts, which means a lot of points. So uh, those are two that definitely don't give up on. When yeah. they get hot. Speaking of hot, Hamels, Halliday, the front end of the Phillies rotation, you're not worried about one bit. No, Cole Hamels is having that comeback year that many people expected. And Roy Halliday, he's having mm. a year that I expected. You know, I think he could even go 24-2, and two, something like that. A guy who could just dominate people inning one through nine, and then he has all that run support with that dynamic Phillies offense. Even in a pitcher's park or a hitter's park in Philly, I don't worry about Roy Halliday. I think he could go 24-2. and two. The question is... Um, to arrest this, you know, how good can Halliday be um, and will that run support make him just unbeatable this year? Well, if he continues that run support, I mean, forget about it. But, I mean, you also got to remember that, let's, let's be honest, too. I mean, it does get hot down there in Philly, too. Actually, much more hotter than even in Toronto when you get deeper in, 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 the, you know, in, the, in the season. So he does have a tend to blip a little bit when you get into August a little bit. Uh, so it would be interesting to see. Because, remember, he's the type of guy, he's old school. He likes to finish what he starts. So he doesn't, you know, I don't need no stinking Brad Lich. I finish my <laughs> games. So a lot of innings. When you get yeah. deep into August, that concerns me a little bit in that small band box park that is not, you know, like, you know, like the, in Toronto. So it might give up a few more home runs. So we said that about Johan Santana when he first came to the Mets with that dynamic, you know, offense they had. He's going to go 25 and 3. Yeah. Things kind of happen, uh, so it's not easy to win 25 games in the Major League. I think Halliday will be the number one pitcher, though, better than Linscom. Okay, so you're not worried about the Phillies' front end. It's the back end yes. of the rotation that's a bit right. iffy. Jay Happ has some uh, issue with his uh, elbow right now. They might skip his start entirely. He can move back, and they can go with a four-man rotation early in the week. And then if he can't pitch over the weekend, they might DL him and bring in Nelson Figueroa. you got Joe Blanton starting a rehab assignment on Tuesday or Wednesday. And then Kyle Kendrick is a guy that I liked going into the season. He had a great spring, earned a rotation spot, but now he's struggling. And uh, I started him in the first two weeks, absorbed those awful starts that he's had. He's got a pitch for his rotation spot with Blanton coming off the DL in uh, a couple weeks. So watch Kyle Kendrick. I wouldn't start him, though, right now. Oh, the Phillies rotation is really a perfect example of how injuries in fantasy yes. and in baseball can just take over. It really is. I mean, and now that I've kind of gotten more into the, you know, the, the following the fantasy angle of a season, uh, right off the bat, you see how injuries, you can think of Lance Berkman, uh, as we talked about. You can think of Ian Kinsler, who, who I have on my team, and, and I'm dying for him to get healthy so right. you know, so he could put up that production of stolen bases, home runs, runs scored, the whole nine. So injuries do take a fa are a major factor. I've said it all the time for several years that almost as much as in the NFL, injuries play a factor in who wins, who goes forward into the playoffs in the Major League Baseball. We are taking a look now at two-star pitchers, starting with Brad Penny and, oh, crazy numbers in April. Uh, yeah, I mean, Brad Penny has made a <laughs> career out of uh, April, and everybody, Jones is for, for having him in April. 22-8 and eight is his career record in April, which is outstanding, one of the best, if not the best ever. Uh, so you, you definitely you keep him early. Uh, maybe it's that second half, e Emac, that uh, maybe you start giving up on Brad Penny. To starts. me, Brad Penny is a max effort guy, so he comes out um, kind of like Jobber Chamberlain, you know. He has that good, great it's start, really and then he kind of slows off. And Brad Penny, you know, is historically a fast starter. He also has the pitching guru, Dave Duncan, it, it's going to help him go a little Invariably. longer this year. They, yes. they have him throwing a little less hard, a little mm -hmm. more focused on command and pitching mm -hmm. to contact. That could help Brad Penny. But in Fantasy Week 3, I think you have to start him. And going back to that two-star pitchers list, I think you have to start Javi Vasquez. Really? Uh, I, with the slow you know, start. With the slow Good start. Good hearing that. But Confidence he's in that. On, he's <laughs> on the road, so those Bronx cheers probably will not be as loud. I think Javi Vasquez can be that guy that you bought, that paid the premium for on draft day. I know he's struggling those first two weeks. I would still ride Javi Vasquez. Let him, let him prove one more week. Cautiously optimistic. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's talk about closers for just one moment. Brian Fuentes may be back Wednesday. So all you fantasy owners that are going, you know what? I spent 
a ton yeah. of money on Rodney. What are, are they out of luck? You're taking the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, Fernando Rodney was a guy who was hot off the waiver wire with those three saves, but he goes back to being his setup man. They don't force Fuentes to lose his job because of injury. Rodney will be the setup man come Wednesday. So in in five days of five games of the week, Fuentes will be the closer. So I'm starting Brian Fuentes in a mixed league, and I'm sitting Fernando Rodney. Fuentes is a guy who's going to get a lot of saves with that team. They're they're famously a team that plays close. Close games, pitching and defense, and Fuentes will save a lot of games, even if he's not as effective as Rodney. What about the Phillies? Brad Lidge is coming back. Around the corner. Right. It's a little different story with the Phillies. Uh, Lidge could come back this week, but they're not going to trust him right away in the closers role. I think if you have Ryan Matson on your team, I think you ride out Ryan Matson. He could even keep the job longer if Lidge comes back and struggles as a setup man. You know, he's been a little better in his rehab outings. He had some sketchy ones in there, but right now, Ryan Madsen's the closer. Even when Lidge comes back, maybe only a week, though, we'll, we'll track that situation closely. All right, we will track it all right here on CBSSports.com. Also, up next, your hitting planner, so don't go far.